Welcome to the Possum Stamps YouTube channel. My name is Marla and today we're creating this A2 size card. We'll be doing some masking and stamping to create our own background. Let's get started and let me share the wonderful stamp set I'm using. So today I'll be featuring the Cup of Tea stamp set. This was part of the June release. There are four sentiments in here. It says, time spent with you is always time well spent. Let's catch up and have a cup. Just because I miss you, you're my cup of tea. And then there are two teapots, the cups, as well as a couple of bees, stepping stones that can lead up to the door, butterflies and then there's little florals here and these florals are great for decorating the teapot a snail and a hedgehog this is a great scene builder set it's a very large set there are many things that you can do with it but for me today I'm going to use these little stamps to build my background so come with me and let's get started I'm starting with some cardstock that's been cut to four by five and a quarter. I am using the medium sized teapot, the snail, and a sentiment to build my scene. I will end up bringing the butterfly in at the very end, but for now I knew these were the stamps that I was going to use. I want to do a little bit of gradient ink blending, and I'm using my masking tape to mask off the area that I want to use to ground my scene. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of forewarning. I am more of an organic crafter. I don't do a lot of measuring. I am trying to use my grid lines to get this as straight as possible. If it's not as straight as you like, I'm really sorry. I know that it bugs some people that I'm not a perfectionist, but it's the way I enjoy card making. I do have Distress Oxide in Worn Lipstick. My first impression, my first thought was that I would use two colors and get three colors out of it, so I wanted three stripes. But when I bring in my second color and go over the small little section of that worn lipstick, then I notice that it doesn't have the depth that I like, so I'm going to have to bring in a third color. When you're using this technique of masking, make sure that you clean off your masking tape in between colors because it will um, contaminate the next color coming in, and I didn't want that. So you'll notice that I do wipe my tape down, and that, again, is simply so I don't get that contaminated color. It doesn't look like I'm getting a third color here, but when I pull off the tape, you will see that I do have a very, very subtle background, but it's not as deep as I would like it, and so I'm gonna take the masking tape off. I'm gonna line it up where that small little line is, and then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of picked raspberry, and that's gonna add the depth that I'm looking for. So this is a really easy technique to get some stripes, um, you could measure this out if you are one of those perfectionists and get some perfectly straight lines, but uh, I don't think you're going to notice that anything's off if it is at all. And I'm going to lift this up, and you're not going to see it because I'm going to quickly cover it back up, and we're going to be doing our stamping. I do have some Copic Friendly ink that I'm stamping with, and I am changing the direction of my stamps. When you're creating a background and you have a stamp that has some sort of direction to it, as these florals do, there are leaves on there, and so I'm making sure that the leaves are in different directions. I'm making sure that I'm going off the page, I'm going over the tape so I don't have complete images as you would with pattern paper. With the circles, it really doesn't matter. With those, I just fill in the white spaces. Once I get all of the flowers stamped. I do bring in the bees to fill in some of those spots and then I will color them in. When I do my Copic coloring, I did decide because these images are so tiny that I didn't want to uh, spend a lot of time doing any shading. So I am going to use one color for each of them and I'm going to color 
one of each of the flowers and the bees. That way you know what colors I used and I just repeated those same colors. I didn't change up any of the colors. I used those same colors on my um, background. And I'm going to finish up right here with the green for the leaf. And now I'm going to do a little bit of ink splattering. I have a couple of doubled over coffee filters and I'm going to use my Gonsai Tombi Starry watercolors. These are my favorite for ink splattering. I'm going to use the pearl color and then I will come in with one of the lighter gold colors. And that's just going to add a little bit more interest to the background of my scene. I'm not using very many stamps. I'm letting my background kind of uh, take over the card and I love the way that that turned out. I did let that air dry. I didn't dry it with the heat tool. I'm going to do some heat embossing. I'm using my anti-static tool and then I am going to bring in some unicorn white pigment ink. I like to use white pigment ink when I'm doing white heat embossing because if there are any stray parts where the embossing powder didn't stick, you still have the white ink underneath and you don't have to try to uh, re-emboss the area. I did use my heat tool off camera and through the magic of editing, there we have my panel. As I said, this is a four by five and a quarter inch panel. I cut this piece of fun foam to about an eighth of an inch smaller than that, and we are going to mount that to an A2 size top folding card base. That card base is four and a quarter by five and a half, if you don't know what an A2 size card is. I will center this onto that card base and then we'll start building our scene. So I am going to glue my teapot and my snail directly to the panel. I decided that I didn't want any more dimension. I love dimension on my cards. I do want to mention that I did color in the inside of the handle of the teapot using a Dove blender pen and some of the festive berries. And then I colored my snail green. You might be wondering why I colored the snail green. I colored it green to go with the leaves in my background. I used some of the Nouveau equivalent to glossy accents on the snail's shell as well as the window. It's called, I believe, Mountain Dew. And now I'm doing one of my favorite things besides splattering, and that is adding accents with my gel pen. I do have a number 10 jelly roll pen. I'm going to add it to the top of the teapot, the base, the handle, and the spout. Then I'm going to add a little bit to the snail. Now that glossy accent is still wet so you saw that I did turn my panel because I didn't want to get my hand in there. I have a black gel pen and I'm adding it to the eye and to the top of the antennae. And then I have these adorable sequins from Possum. I will link everything in the description box below. I forgot to share these at the beginning but these uh, sequins are available in the store. There are the most beautiful sequin mixes that are available. If you haven't checked out the store, uh, please do so. If you haven't subscribed to the Possum Stamps YouTube channel, we would love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified. Here's a look at my card. I did add that butterfly. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, have a fabulous day.